Hey everyone! So today I want to share with you how to make a charcuterie board. Spring is here and I think we're going to be entertaining a lot more and this is one of my favorite ways to do it. I have, you know, so many different kind of people who like eat certain things. One is vegetarian, one is vegan, one is gluten-free, dairy-free and making this charcuterie board is kind of like it pleases everyone and it's not a lot of work really it isn't and i just want to show you what we got i actually got a lot of ingredients at aldi it's one of my favorite stores to shop at and i can spend hours choosing picking because they always have something unique interesting um i really like their cheeses and i actually got a variety um we got their blue cheese um bird cheese their havarti cheese which i love for grilled cheese and then um, their goat cheese. Then this actually I got at Whole Foods. It's one of my favorite cheeses. How many times can I say cheese in like a minute? Anyways, <laughs> this is one of my favorite cheeses of all time. It's um it's from Netherlands and it's a Gouda, aged Gouda. It is phenomenal. So if you ever want to try it, this is what it looks like and it's so yummy. And then this is Manchego from Aldi. And then for the salamis, now for the salami portion, I like to have a variety as well, but at least three would be like, you know, you want to at least have a variety of three different kinds. This is just typical hard salami, prosciutto. This actually had to get at Trader Joe's, but, and then we also got the, um, the deli selection. Okay, we got that. And then I also picked up, this might not be for everyone, this is um, like a organic chicken, pork and wild mushroom mousse. It's basically a pate and I love pates. I like to include it, but if you don't like it, let's just not even go into it. And then we have some dry fruit. If you don't have any fresh fruit, you don't have to um, you know, worry about it. I always have dry fruit on hand, but I picked up uh, this at all of you just to show you that you can, you know, have this and throw it in with the charcuterie board. This is dry apricots, uh, figs, and then some pineapple. I don't know if we're gonna use pineapple, we'll see. Just thinking for a pop of color. It is spring, I wanna have, you know, nice and vibrant, bright colors, or pastel colors, I don't know, what's, what's the spring color? Spring colors, basically. And then I also got this, um, roasted gorgonzola crackers they are from trader joe's and then these are from aldi this is a really good variety we get these quite often and last but not least we got the uh deluxe mixed nuts with sea salt i love getting them at aldi they took a variety of different nuts and i also love putting it in my shikuri reward because it's something that you can just grab with your fingers and just eat it and it's easy convenient um, then I have some olives that I got, and this is one of my new favorite things. It's actually caper berries. They taste like capers, but they're bigger. I don't know how to explain. They're like pickle and caper together. I don't know, but they will add a nice addition to the board. Just something, something extra, and they are very, very delicious. And then rosemary you can do thyme you can do basil whatever you have some greenery also elevates the the board and then i also have i also blanched i also blanched some uh fresh asparagus i had in the fridge and i'm actually gonna see if i can put this on the end for the spring element um just to add it see if we'll go and whoever likes asparagus will appreciate it. and then one other thing is if you do have anything fresh or you know fresh fruit on hand or anything, I love to add pear to it. Uh, it goes well with anything. You can also use an apple. I have an apple and a pear. We'll see what we're gonna go, but I love using pears. All right, so first things first. Oh, last but not least, of course, again, um, fig jam. You can use any jam you like, but I love using fig jam. It goes well with anything, it goes well with salty, sweet, savory. Um, that you can also use honey. I love using honey and I might drizzle some on top of the cheeses. I don't know if I'll put it on the side. And then what I also got is these little 
clear containers. Uh, you want to kind of keep it consistent with color. So if this is in a clear container, which I'm actually going to leave it in the jar, just gives it more like a rustic look. And that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to use these and I got these guys. These are the utensils. These are specifically made for cheese boards or charcuterie boards. Um, this is like, has like little ridges. It has like a knife. It's a knife with little ridges. This is a, a fork that you can just grab your salami or anything that you need to pierce through. This is something to scoop, I guess. And then this is to spread. I'm gonna have this here and just decide how we're gonna do it. And then for the board, this is the board that I have purchased. I got it at Home Goods. It wasn't too expensive, and it's actually pizza. It's called Pizza Peel. I guess this is for pizza, but we're gonna use this for a charcuterie board and cheese platters because I love that it's wood. I like how it's just round. I like the handle on it. I'm gonna use it. Who cares if it's just for pizza? All right, so let's just get started. The first thing that I'm gonna do is figure out where I'm gonna use these. So I'm gonna add this one here, here, and then I'm thinking of putting the fig jam here. Have as much variety as possible with the colors of the cheeses. So I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna start with this cheese. I'm just gonna start putting everything together and then I'm also gonna rearrange because that's what it is. It's never gonna be perfect the first time but you can play around once you get everything on the board. You can actually see it's kind of like creating art with food, which I think is amazing. And one thing is that you don't want to mix anything too soggy next to the cheese. So you want to make sure dry stays with the dry. And that's why you use these little containers to put the olives or anything that has some kind of juice. Because if it sits for a little bit, it's not going to, it's just going to get everything soggy and you don't want that. Okay. And then we're so we got the cheeses on
final product. Look how beautiful this looks. And you know what they say, you first see with your eyes and it looks amazing. Olives, the crackers, the different colored cheeses. This is something you can make a little bit in advance. Maybe wait to drizzle the honey, um, but you can definitely make this, put this in the fridge. I would hold off on the crackers. I would just add them the very last moment. Maybe not the nuts as well. But you are good to go if you just make it and you don't have to worry about anything. All right, so I'm gonna have to try something from here. Um, the nuts are really good. This cheese with this cracker is really good. So you wanna make sure you have the utensils available and then they can just pick it up like this need it. And then you just leave it here. Right here. And this is for the blue cheese because you can definitely take a little bit of the blue cheese and smear it on the cracker. Mmm really good i'm telling you guys aldi has amazing selection of cheeses and salamis i'm not gonna spend so much money on this gourmet platter i mean look at this how much would you pay for this at a restaurant come on so aldi is the place to go for majority of the things and then if you want to pick and choose a few other places but go there get it there and you will not regret it guys have a charcuterie board on one of your parties or get-togethers this spring and you know use your imagination and I hope you guys have fun with it just as much as I did. I'll see you next time. Bye!